In our battle with the devil, we need spiritual help. We learn in the scriptures that we are involved in a battle against evil and that we must defend ourselves if we are to win. God gives us his mighty armor to defend us and help us triumph. In 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11, the Apostle Paul tells us to be on the lookout for Satan's methods and tactics. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. These are the six pieces of God's armor. The shoes of the gospel of peace, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, and the helmet of salvation. Ephesians 6 verses 14 to 17 says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. God gives us these six parts of armor to strengthen and safeguard us, allowing us to fully succeed in our spiritual warfare. Each part of God's armor is vital, and the Bible instructs us on how to put it on and wield it successfully. In Ephesians 6 verses 10 and 20, Paul addressed this issue and talked about wearing the full armor of God. He wrote the Ephesians letter when he was imprisoned. Paul undoubtedly grew familiar with the equipment and weapons used by his captors in the Roman army while he was imprisoned. Paul made a potent analogy between the spiritual armor and the protective gear used by soldiers. He wrote in Ephesians 6 verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We should not be scared by Satan's traps or by his cunning and power. We have access to the greatest power in the universe, so we are not fighting this battle alone. He continues in Ephesians 6 verses 11 to 12. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The Bible talks about spiritual wars that are not visible, such as the enormous conflict that the Apostle John saw at the end of the age. Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9 And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, either was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Even though all of this is taking on in the spiritual realm, it greatly affects the material world. The devil is a master of disguise and he is able to deceive people into thinking that he doesn't exist. Paul continued in Ephesians 6 verse 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Here, Paul was highlighting that with God's assistance, we would be able to hold the line, refuse to yield, and never cede even a small portion of God's domain. The Bible also explains how to equip God's armor. Here is how you can wield all piece of armor to defeat Satan's forces. The Shoes of the Gospel of Peace According to the Bible, the sandals of the Roman soldier often were fitted with nails, or armed with spikes, to make the hold firm in the ground. Our strong basis is built upon the good news of God and our responsibility, or marching orders, to proclaim it, which will propagate his message of peace throughout the world. We will be prepared to share the message with others once we have put on our spiritual shoes. The Belt of Truth The first piece of gear we put on is a belt, which holds all the other parts of our armor in place. Because the soldier would only take it off while he was off duty, wearing the belt indicated that he was prepared for battle. We should be belted with truth. Devil's falsehoods and tricks may be defeated with absolute certainty by understanding God's truth. 
and in order to genuinely be prepared for the fight, we must be wholly honest within, just like our Lord. We were urged to proclaim the truth and love by Paul. Ephesians 4 verse 15 But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. A Christian warrior must embrace the gospel in these dangerous end times, to be protected from the wicked and demons. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 9 to 10 Even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. The Shield of Faith Satan cannot penetrate our defenses, while our faith in God's might and love is strong. Faith is more than simply accepting the existence of God, it contains the strong conviction that whatever God does is indeed for our benefit. Additionally, faith is the unwavering certainty that God will always keep his promises. Romans 4 verses 18 to 21. Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about one hundred years old, either yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that, what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Our incredibly strong faith shields us not only from earthly threats, but also from the even more difficult spiritual temptations and perils. The shield of faith is for more than just personal defense. The Roman soldiers used a tactic in which they joined their shields together. We can overcome any obstacle if we combine our shields, that is, if we support and encourage one another through our faith in the best way we can. The Breastplate of Righteousness We expose ourselves to Satan's attacks if we lack righteousness. In order to be virtuous, we must first turn from our sins and receive forgiveness through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who sets us free from guilt and reconciles us to God. Romans 5 verse 9 Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. As a result, we ought to make an effort to follow God's moral standards out of appreciation. Psalm 119 verse 172 my tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. According to this scripture, God's commands are righteous. Therefore, following God's principles of love makes one righteous. Deuteronomy 10 verse 13 To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. 1 John 5 verse 3 For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. According to Isaiah 59 verse 17, righteousness is a breastplate that God wears. Paul's use of this comparison may have been partially motivated by this. The Helmet of Salvation Focusing on the huge cost that Jesus Christ paid to redeem us and the magnificent kingdom that is the result of our salvation may give us a great deal of hope and consolation. Our thoughts are shielded by this optimism from the sorrow and hopelessness of this life. Through the millennia, God's people have been shielded and fortified by the promise of redemption. Psalm 27 verse 1 My heart rejoiceth in the Lord, mine horn is exalted in the Lord, my mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. 1 Samuel 2 verse 1, David wrote. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Sword of the Spirit In the same way that the Roman Gladius did, we can likewise aid in the defeat of all of our foes, including the most powerful of them. Hebrews 4 verse 12 clarifies, For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 
Do you recall how Jesus defeated Satan by using the Word of God in Matthew 4 verses 1 to 10? Christ cited the scriptures three times. He recalled the verses that addressed the issue, provided guidance for what to do, and fortified his will. And we should do the same. By itself, our sword won't maintain its edge. It needs to be consistently sharpened through regular, in-depth Bible study. We may keep God's knowledge at the top of our minds, ready to guide us in making wise decisions and fighting off Satan's attacks, by learning the Word of God every day. In closing this chapter, Paul exhorts us to pray ardently for ourselves, for one another, and for the mission of the church. Ephesians 6 verses 18 to 20 Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly, as I ought to speak. We all progress ahead on our knees, including the church. Praying helps us stay focused on the war, helps us remember where our power and protection comes from, and helps us show God that we are fully dedicated to being his followers as loyal and faithful warriors. The best defenses against Satan's attacks are prayers and Bible study. We must be ready to face Satan's attempts to assault us with pride, envy, thirst for illicit pleasures, disappointment, despair, fear, or any other tactics he may employ when we put on the full armor of God. This extensive list of protections that God provides us with has so much more to teach us. Keep in mind that we are at war. Let us be on the lookout for Satan's schemes and put on the full armor of God.